the city of Townsville has gone through a lot lately, but that doesn't stop the Warner Bros. Media conglomerates from making sweet, sweet cash off our property. <sighs> Let's just get on with it. Ah, uh, the Powerpuff Girls, a franchise you definitely heard of if you're not living under the biggest rock in the whole entire world. The Powerpuff Girls is definitely one of Cartoon Network's most iconic properties. You know, the three girls who fight crime and the forces of evil while trying to live everyday life? Too bad they couldn't stop 9-11 though. Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> the show single-handedly spawned a movie, an anime spin-off, manga, comics, video games, two TV specials, a reboot in 2016 that sucked, and tons and tons of merchandise. The original show was great throughout the majority of its run. Sure, there was some season a lot between the fifth and sixth season. Ow. as bad as shows like The Simpsons, Family Guy, or web series like Super Mario Logan. Well, I couldn't even last one video without mentioning Logan. Holy crap, seasonal warnings. At least the show ended and it had a good reputation. Up until 2016, when a Pacific reboot was released. The Powerpuff Girls was announced for a reboot all the way back on June 16th, 2014, a few months after the Powerpuff Girls Dance Pants special aired. Holy crap, it's only been 7 years since that special aired? I vividly remember watching it on TV! Alright, let's get back on track. One noticeable difference between the production of the reboot and the production of the original show is that Craig McCracken had no involvement in the reboot. This was due to his contract with Disney Television Animation as he was still working on the TV show, Wander Over Yano, another show that was eventually screwed over by Disney. This was not the first time where Craig was not working on the Powerpuff Girls though. During the 5th and 6th season of the original series, McCracken left production of the show to focus on his new show, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. He let Chris Sabino take his place as executive producer, while production of the Powerpuff Girls was moving to Cartoon Network Studios from Hanna-Barbera. This is notable because this is where most people, including me, pinpoint where the quality of the show really went downhill. One interesting fact is that Cartoon Network had offered to give McCracken and Sabino a 7th season of the series after the end of season 6, but McCracken believed that 6 seasons in the movie was enough, and that the series had won its course. In my opinion, this was the best decision. Imagine if the Powerful Skills was still airing new episodes, pumping out as many as possible, just so that Turner Broadcasting could earn a few extra bucks. The show's quality and reputation would be down the drain. Honestly, you don't have to imagine that. So many shows are doing that exact same thing right now. Now let's go back to talking about the reboot. Another super noticeable difference between the production of both shows is that the voice actors of the three girls changed. On June 9, 2015, Cartoon Network announced new details on the PPG reboot, including information on the voices of the characters. CN announced that three new voice actors would take place over the roles of Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup in the 2016 reboot, while the majority of the cast for the supporting characters will return. Blossom will be voiced by Amanda Leeson, Bubbles by Kristen Lee, and Buttercup by Natalie Palamides. The thing is that the original voice actors were happy about this. They were in fact disappointed. Tara Strong, voice actress of Bubbles in the original show, tweeted on Twitter, I don't remember ordering a stab in the heart today, among a few other tweets. The other actors also vented their disappointment on Twitter. An interesting note here is that the original voice actors were supposed to play in the reboot at one point. In an interview via Talk Goose and Geeks, E.T. Daly, the voice actor of Buttercuff, stated that herself, Tara Strong, and Carsey Cavavini, who played Blossom in the original series, 
but we'll all go out back to record an episode for the reboot it was a different show runner. Eventually, something happened that caused Bob Boyle and Nick Jennings to take over as show runners. Bob and Nick decided to replace the voice actors for the Freeman Ghouls, like I said earlier in this video. Nothing has surfaced from the supposed pilot, and it's unknown as more was completed besides the voice acting. In April 2016, Nick Jennings, executive producer of PBG 2016, also revealed that the producers had considered bringing back the original voice actors for the new series, but ultimately decided that recasting the world would give new energy to the characters. As the current year, the pilot is lost. Lost. The voice actor change was in the only controversy around the reboot though. In fact, it was the smallest controversy out of all the ones around the reboot. Miss Bellum, the mayor's secretary, was removed from the 2016 reboot in an episode called Bye Bye Bellum. The reasoning behind the removal was because Nick Jennings felt like Miss Bellum was quite indicative of the kind of messaging the crew wanted to be giving out at that time, so they sort of had to move on, and that was a good choice he saw on their part. Yet the same crew was allowed to depict 6 year old guilt twerking and this, yeah, not to mention one of the writers of the show was outed as a pedo. The crew of the show also decided to remove Miss Keen's breast which no one would have noticed until they removed it. Then they brought it back? What was the point of this change? Yeah, this show was doomed before it was even aired. The show also used to turn dated memes- Now my ghost stop! Why? Uh, Why would you do that? Trance and slang that weren't needed at all. The show tried to imitate Teen Titans Go, but it failed miserably. And this is coming from a person who doesn't even like the show. The reboot was panned by critics, and it was a disaster for Cartoon Network due to low ratings, which caused CN to only air the show once a new episode needed a premiere. It was also CN's fault for the failure of the series, though. The network didn't market the show that much on their channel or anywhere else and put the show on a Sunday afternoon time frame, which is basically a death sentence in terms of Cartoon Network shows. Okay, KO had this problem as well. The network saw that the show was doing bad because people didn't want to watch it, but the real reason was because CN themselves never promoted or aired the series frequently after mid-2016. If they marketed the show more, there would be at least better ratings than what the series got when it ended, even with a sharp decline in cable TV ratings after 2016. PBT 2016 finally kicked a bucket on June 16, 2019, after three years of airing on the network. The show hasn't aired on CN ever since. Power Horse Ghost as a franchise was gonna stay silent and in dormant after that mess of a reboot we saw. Isn't it isn't time for the series to take a break anyways, especially right after that dumpster fire of a reboot? We stopped long, because on August 24, 2020, news broke out about a supposed live action reboot of the Power Horse Ghost being produced for the CW. Yeah, the same company who greenlit Titans and Riverdale greenlit an edgy Power Horse Ghost reboot. Makes sense to me. I'm not saying that it can't work and that it's impossible for it to be good, but I don't think I've ever seen worse odds in a live action translation from an animated property. I don't really have any hope for it. I don't see this going over well in translation. And this seems to spin the formula so far that it may not even be Powerpuff Girls anymore. I mean, can you even call them Powerpuff Girls if they're now Powerpuff women? PBT live action reboot revolves around a titular superheroes who are now disillusioned 20 somethings who reset having lost their childhood to crime fighting. And will they agree to reunite now that the world needs them more than ever? This concept really makes no sense in the context of the original PBG series, as the girls actually like Fight Friday and show no regrets in their actions. The movie even states their reasoning too. If they're gonna do a big philosophy change like this, there should be an explained reason in the live action show, or it looked like the concept was too run in for profit. It's like they stole the concept of the HBO Powerful Girls video from 2014. Honestly, I shouldn't expect an explained reason for this, as they will probably screw up everything that's so that the clock will be dark. The project is being produced by Hagnan D. Wagner and Diablo Cody, two writers who have worked on various live action TV shows. The show will be produced by Berlantic Productions with Sarah Snander and David Madden being executive producers. Berlantic Productions being the studio that many of these CW shows are produced by. The show will be distributed by Warner Bros. Television, of course. The series is most likely set to premiere during the 2021-22 CW season. The reception of this announcement was pretty negative, with people also making jokes around the absurd premise. There were plenty of videos criticizing the concept of the series, and rightfully so. A reboot that goes against the philosophy of the source material is always going to be criticized by people, just like what I'm doing right now. Some people like Rebel Taxi were optimistic for the series, thinking that it could turn out well or so bad it's good. I honestly wish I could have that much optimism because I can't see this turning out well at all. There isn't any confirmation of the series anyway, so it might be fake. Right?
Wow. <laughs> so wrong. I once hoped that the news of the reboot was fake. Like Variety somehow falling for an outside source. But I should have known better. I started to realize that the article from Variety is more than like a reveal. Something like this should be expected in the modern entertainment industry. Reboots, remakes, and revivals do so well if they are complete trash. My speculations became true because on February 9th, 2021, Variety posted an article stating that the pilot for the live action series of the Powerpuss Girls was picked up by the CW. My fears were sadly confirmed. Knowing the CW, they're most likely gonna green light the series and run it for a few years before it finally gets cancelled. As I was writing the script, major news was revealed around the reboot. On March 9th, 2020, exactly one month after the announcement of CW ordering a pirate the reboot, news broke out from Looper about who would be playing the free girls in the live action series. Glosson will be played by Chloe Bennett, Bubbles will be played by Doe Cameron, and Buttercup will be played by Yana Pruitt. To be honest, I am indifferent with these choices, since I don't even know who any of these people are. Call me uncultured, I honestly don't care. The only person I know on this list is Chloe Bennett because she dated Logan Paul once. The only thing I care about is if they play their respective roles well. We even receive personality descriptions for each character. The Looper article states that Glossom's ambitions had led her through receiving several advanced degrees, but her past as a childhood superhero has made her a bit of a recluse. This means that Glossom is probably going to be more of a solitary person in this series and probably a boy talking with the other girls, which is quite unexpected for a character since he is known as a grave leader in the original series. Bubbles is known to have maintained her sweetness, thank god, with slight undertones of toughness, is more interested than her sister in the possibility of reclaiming their superhero roles, mainly for the fame. I don't really see Bubbles as a fame-hungry person, and with the 2016 reboot making an episode with a premise just like this, failing, I just can't see that part of her character being good. At least she'll still be hardcore. Buttercup in this series will be given a chance to show her softer sides past her overall tough nature. But unlike her sister Bubbles, Buttercup is dedicated to living an anonymous life and keeping her famous superhero past behind her. Buttercup definitely does have a softer side that we don't see often in an original series. In the episode cover up, Buttercup had a soft green blanket that she was obsessed with and would hug, which gave her confidence to be a better fighter. Buttercup being the most persistent and keeping her past life secret is off to me. Buttercup felt like the character who would want the fame the most to me. Literally any character but Bubbles would fit the fame hungry characteristic more. Glossom would have more of a reason to be fame hungry compared to Bubbles. I... I just don't get it. While I was making this video, we received even more news about the casting for the reboot. On March 30th, 2021, Variety posted an article about who will be playing Professor Utonium in this live action series. It was announced that David Faison, actor of Christopher Took and Scrubs, you know, that one guy who created a default dance. I think I got a ton of millennials angry with that assumption, but I honestly don't care. Cry more. Honestly, I am okay with this acting choice. Since David Faison is more of a comedic actor, the professor could be the closest to his normal self. He might not be as retconned as I thought he would. Hopefully that that's all the news I have to put in this video because I'm tired of doing this. Hopefully. Yeah, nope. <laughs> Two days after that announcement from Variety, on April 1st of all days, casting for a new character in this live action mess of a reboot was revealed. Yes, a completely new character exclusively for this series. This is probably over the start though. The new character is called Mojo Jojo Jr. Dear God, this is a bad idea. What, is he gonna be a CGI monkey still or just a human? Probably the latter at this point. Played by Nicholas Pardani, Mojo Jojo Jr. was obsessed with the Powerpuff skills as a kid, despite his father's grudge against him. As an adult, Jojo finds his sweetness and rage in constant battle. So you're just telling me in 20 or so years in the future, Mojo had a kid that's already a fully grown adult? What, was he alive when the Powerpuff Girls were still tweens? As you can tell, I'm not filled with this announcement. Mojo Jojo Jr. sounds like a fanfiction character, not a character for an official Powerpuff Girls series. Like seriously, what was the point of this character? To add in extra fill characters for space? Don't you guys have a full roster of characters from the original series that you could use? Why not use them for Christ's sakes? Okay. I'm just getting too angry over this. Let's just talk about the other piece of information we build. CW finally announced the name of the series. The series is simply called Powerpuff. I actually predicted the name would be simply just one part of the original title, just like Titans and Teen Titans. This is a title that had no thought put into it, just like most of this show if I had to predict anything as of now. Now we can finally travel back to past me, then past past me. <laughs>
Okay, that's it. Let's just go back to past me. The series has a 90% chance of being a train wreck, a 5% chance of being surprisingly outstanding, the 5% chance of being so bad it's good in my opinion. Though Cameron, the actress of Bubbles, stated on Twitter that the script is quote unquote unreal and that she thinks she hasn't laughed out loud so much from reading anything before. Hey, at least that gives me a little hope. Honestly, I originally doubted the concept of the series was even written for the PPG in the first place. It just sounds so out of place for a series like it. Diablo Cody probably made a new property that had nothing to do with the PPG and pitched it, but the CW told it to stick the PPG into it so they can earn 10 times more money from nostalgic fools who watch anything that has their childhood series name on it. Thinking about it even further, how are they going to do a lot of the characters' designs? Are Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup just going to look like regular humans? Because I ain't assuming they are, just so that they don't look horrifying to look at. Are they going to do a completely CGI rendition of Moto Jojo like The Lion King 2019? Or are they going to use a real monkey and put digital muzzle replacements over him so that he can talk? Beverly Hills to all his style? Chihuahua. Either way, he's gonna look terrible. He's literally a green monkey with a giant grain. Holy crap! How about fuzzy lumpkins and the amoeba boys? Especially the amoeba boys. Are they even gonna appear in the first place? Or are this gonna be random cameos like in the Powerful Skills 2016? Are they gonna just make them humans or make them possess the ugliest CGI I ever seen? Like Mojo Jojo? I honestly don't have a clue. Now it's that tangent ahead of us. Let's just make some predictions of what the show will be like. The show is confirmed to be gritty, we can predict what could happen easily. While I was writing this video, I found a very interesting image on Twitter.com from Attackless Ogre that is a bingo of sorts at what could happen in the CW reboot. I decided to talk about the predictions that are most likely going to happen in my opinion. Here are my predictions of the series based on this bingo chart. Let's look at each row in horizontal order, starting with the first row. The gang green gang's illegal activities are going to be cranked up to 11. They're definitely going to sell drugs, that's for sure. Now for the scene. This is going to be a CW show, it's definitely going to have that scene that will definitely ruin many childhoods, it's just a given at this point. The horrible CGI from Mojo Jojo is self-explanatory since I already talked about it, and the black market chemical X just makes sense for a gritty reboot. Now to the second row. Since the show Batwoman is still running, I see this choice as a high possibility. Hadn't the CW always done a crossover with the Flash and Arrow all the way back in 2014? I even saw an article stating that the CW has plans of airing its next DC Comics crossover in the first or second quarter of 2021. It's basically just CW tradition at this point. The hotline is definitely going to be one of the girls' smartphones. It's basically a given at this point. Blossom having a mental illness is probably going to happen since she is a recluse person in this show. And a lack cover is highly likely in this day and age. I can also see Misa Collins being him, due to the low probability of the production crew using CGI due to budget constraints. Next, the dude will. The professor is going to be retcon. I know it. An abusive father's club is going to be one of the personalities they put on him. <sighs> Poor guy. And poor Tom Kane, because on December 30th, 2020, it was reported that Kane, the voice of the professor, suffered a stroke which damaged his speech, writing, and reading capabilities. There is a very high chance of him retiring from voice acting due to this, and he ended his role of the professor in a terrible final episode of a terrible reboot. Sad. Bubble snorting coke is probably going to happen in her role of trying to look tough to others. This is the CW, of course they're going to have some stupid SAW representation that no reasonable normal person should care about. Woo! That was quick. Let's go down to the fourth row. The Amoeba Boys could be either live action or CGI because... because... I honestly don't know at this point. Buttercup is definitely going to be that character that will be used to appeal to the LGBTQ crowd. The wires will put some hints about LGBTQ relationship with Buttercup, but that's all they will say. Probably to appeal to China. Finally, now we can look at the fifth row. Princess Morbux might be redeemed if she's even in the show for Christ's sake, and they will definitely make her a mean girl stereotype, because in order to fix Sunny, gotta cause another problem first, they'll definitely wear normal clothing. Blossom's gonna have dyed hair and no doubt. They'll probably shoot her in a dead mom plot because every single piece of kids Mia needs to have one of the parents to be dead due to the Disney rule. I mean, it's not a kid for me at this time, but still, you get my point. And last but not least, Townsville is probably 
Dang, I've been saying probably so many times now. Gonna be heavily corrupt and dirty AF for sure. I also found another interesting Beagle chart, this time being by Scene McSorsley's friend. I mark Delta predictions I think are gonna be true. I also won't talk about predictions I already covered in the last bingo, so there's that. Let's get right into it. Skip it up and that up! Miss Bellum has a decent chance of being mayor since this is several decades into the future. The writers might put a reference to the original series ad credit scene as a ringtone for an easter egg. This will probably be the only scene from the original show to be in the reboot. This live action reboot might have more scenes in common with the 2016 reboot than the original 1998 series at this point. Blossom might just be a one dimensional, solitary, leave me alone type of character. The girls will definitely have fingers and there will definitely be a meta 90s cartoon reference somewhere. Buttercup could have left Townsville since she is described in the Looper article to be dedicated to living an anonymous life and to put her superhero past behind. I'm also guessing that Buttercup is going to be the character used for woke points since the actor is of mixed origin. Buttercup is definitely going to be the first character to even cuss in this show and it's most likely going to say the A word in the same manner as Robin saying fuck that man in the Titan show. The chances of the girls ghosting the professor is very high especially if the professor is shown as an abusive father. Since the series takes place several decades in the future the mayor is probably going to be dead considering the fact that he always looked pretty old in the series. The show's gonna be edgy, so of course it's gonna be the iconic music color scheme that's in most other CW shows like Riverdale. Sedusa is probably coming back and will be turned up to 11 if she appears. Since him is known for cross-dressing in the original, I can see this happening. It will probably cause much more controversy than the announcement of the series alone. I can also see Miss Bellon's face being shown all the time, likely because the production crew couldn't find a wig big enough or that they just didn't care to cover up. Phew! All that predicting got me worn out, but I still got something else I need to finally talk about. Throughout the past several years, I have noticed a major trend in Hollywood. The trend of rebooting a cartoon into a live action series or movie. In this year alone, we have gotten several announcements slash releases of live action version of cartoons like The Fairy Odd Parents, Monster High, and Lynx Club to name a few. These shows don't need to be in live action. These shows work in animation because they were made for the animation medium. Hollywood treats animation as a genre. And that has caused people to think it's a genre too. Thanks Hollywood, greenwashing sheep since 1910. The only reason why these reboots are even produced is because these big corporations know people who watch it. Even if it's good or bad. Me talking about these reboots is giving these shows free publicity anyway. The best way to stop these live action versions of cartoon from being made is to not watch it. In any monetary fashion at least. <laughs> if you still want to watch it, watch it online for free or torrent it. Just don't give these companies your money while watching it. If enough people do this, maybe some of these shows will get cancelled after the first season. Well, maybe only for shows I described above. Powerpuss Girls might be a different case. Well, even sometimes piracy can benefit the companies that produce the show. Because it shows that people still have interest in it, they just not give the company money. Another CW produced show that I already mentioned that had pretty low ratings since its inception is Batwoman. Batwoman's first episode only received around 1.68 million viewers. From then on, the viewers kept dropping and dropping until its newest episode at the time of me writing this video only got 0.46 million viewers. There are many reasons for this, like the show just being plain bad and conflicting news around it. You would think that a show failing this badly would cause a cancellation, right? Nope. Because on February 3rd, 2021, Batwoman was renewed for a third season. This is how I feel like the Power Book Guild Weaver is going to turn out. The show will get historically low ratings, but the CW will keep renewing it for several seasons. Why would the CW do this, even though this actors can lose them lots of money? I honestly don't know. The push and agenda behind with this series? That's probably the reason why. The CW doesn't care about quality anymore, if really ever. Nor does any company who contributes to this practice. At the end of the day, the live action remakes as reboot trend isn't really a trend. It's a common practice that has been happening for decades. The 90s had it with movies like The Flintstones, the 2000s had it with movies like Alvin and the Chickmunks, Garfield and the Pink Panther, and the 2010s had it with movies like The Smurfs and Ted. Also, Ted was great. Don't at me. Just this time it's on TV instead of your local movie theater. Rip. Throughout this whole video, I've been ripping on this potential series that hasn't been picked up yet. We don't even know when or why it will be picked up. We also don't know how good or bad it will be. So the best thing to do right now is wait. Maybe, just maybe, the Powerpuff Skills live action reboot produced for the CW will be good. Yeah, no, it's gonna suck. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Whenever that is. Well, this video came out longer than I expected it to. 
It's not important where it happened. It's not important when it happened. It's not even important how it happened. What is important is... It happened. Boy, you need to look out. That <laughs> truck almost ran you over. <laughs> Yeah.